I'm going to talk about in the fourth part of the finance topic, I'm going to talk about profit margins. Now, of course, you need to have calculated your gross and net profit. So you need to do sales minus cost of sales equals gross profit minus expenses equals net profit. To calculate your gross profit margin, you need to divide your gross profit by your revenue figure. Now, your revenue figure is your sales figure or your turnover figure, the one you find at the top of that little chart, sales minus cost of sales equals gross profit. And then to get a percentage figure, you need to multiply that by 100. So gross profit margin is gross profit divided by revenue times 100. So you're looking at what percentage of our turnover is gross profit. Now, if your gross profit percentage is decreasing or if compared to similar businesses in the same industry, it's not very high, then first thing you could do is increase your selling price because then there's a bigger gap between what you're getting in for the product and what you're paying out for the raw materials or the actual product. Or you could negotiate with your supplier to get your cost of sales cheaper. So if we're selling our pens for 50p and we're buying them in for 20p, that's where you go back to the supplier and say, actually, we'd like to buy them for 15p, please, because then obviously your gross profit is going to increase and that percentage will increase. That's your gross profit margin. Now, your net profit margin is your net profit divided by your revenue, again, times 100 to get that percentage. And again, this is measuring the success of the business. If the business is making a healthy net profit, then it can be competitive um, and it can or it can use the profit within the business as retained profit to grow the business. Now, if net profit is not looking very good compared to other businesses in the same industry or it's decreasing over the years, then you need to reduce what's going out. So you need to reduce the expenses. So reduce what you're paying to um, staff or for, for advertising or change premises so your rent's cheaper. I mean, obviously, again, with net profit, you could increase what's coming in. So increase the price or um, have a promotion so that you sell more, so that you get an increased revenue. But um, net profit is very, very important. If there's less net profit, the business is less successful. So if it's a public limited company, a PLC, shareholders might sell, start selling their shares because they think, well, I'm not going to get paid much of a dividend here. There's not much profit to share out amongst us, so I'm going to sell my shares and get out. And so then they might sell and you might get taken over by another company who buys the shares cheaply and then has a controlling interest. So that's obviously not good for um, a PLC necessarily. If there's less net profit, I've already said there's less retained profit for growth or for buying new equipment, etc. Um, if you've got less net profit, outside investors like banks are less likely to lend to you or invest in the business. However, if you've got more net profit, I've already said you'd be more competitive. You can reduce prices and gain market share, hopefully, by selling more or you can use the increased profit to grow the business. So net profit is a good thing. And if you've made a net profit, if you're a PLC, public limited company, or a limited company, a private limited company, you will probably or possibly need to share some of that profit amongst the shareholders because they get their dividend, their reward for having invested in the business.